Hi! In this video we are going to use a Commodore dataset from the 1980s and an Arduino Uno to store digital data on magnetic tape audio cassettes, like those. Data storage on magnetic media was right there at the beginning of the personal computer revolution and never left since then. There's a lot of interesting physics and electronics involved and it's actually really easy to do without any additional circuitry or modifications. If that gets you interested, let's dive right in and pay tribute to this ingenious little device, which today is often thrown away or sold for under ten dollars on the net. So let's see how we can connect a dataset to an Arduino. On a real Commodore 64, this plugs right onto the PCB, like so. Hmm. I've made a little cardboard adapter using sticky copper tape. I hope you can see it on camera. So that fits quite nicely. Here is the pinout of the dataset connector. Our Arduino needs to provide 5 volts and ground, a read and a write line. For the cassette motor to spin, we also need to provide 6 volts DC to the motor pin. I am using a scrap power supply here. As soon as you press the play forward or rewind button, the dataset shorts the sense pin to ground. We can use this feature to switch the motor voltage on and off by simply connecting motor ground to the sense pin. Now the dataset should be working. Okay, time to heat up my soldering iron and wire everything up. That's all we're gonna need. Okay, now that we've connected everything, we need a reliable way to write data to the data set. It may seem funny, but I'm going to use the Arduino's built-in serial UART interface here. For example, if we write serial print A, the Arduino sends the corresponding ASCII code 65 via its TX pin. However, it would be quite unreliable to send this data directly to the tape for multiple reasons. Just think about the susceptibility to speed fluctuations of the cassette motor, also known as flutter and woe. So let us send the data bit by bit instead by using a start code indicating the start of a byte together with a high and low code for a 1 and a 0 bit. The advantage here is that this method is quite robust against changes in motor speed because each code can be identified as long as it falls inside the indicated windows. Let's go ahead and implement this inside the Arduino IDE. Let us change the number of stop bits from 1 to 2. So there's a good reason for that. Because if we read back the data and we are dealing with a little flutter and woe from the cassette motor, um, we should read and wait only for one single stop bit 
But since we have written two stock bits, the reading sketch will always be finished reading a single byte before it actually ends. And so it will be ready for the next byte just in time. In the signal path of the dataset, our signal unfortunately gets inverted. So in order to get our original signal back, we have to write our signal um, in an inverted way. And we could do that by sending the original TX signal of the Arduino through an inverter gate. But uh, we don't want to use any additional components here, uh, so we are just using a, some sort of software inversion. I will use the Arduino pin D2 to read the TX signal in and output it via pin 3 um, in an inverted way. Okay, now I have started a new sketch for our data reader. Yeah, that should be it. So, let's test it. I've uploaded the writing program into the Arduino now, and as you can see by this little yellow LED, the Arduino is already transmitting our ABC test string. Let's record it onto cassette tape. Now let's rewind and use our reading sketch to read back the data we have just written onto the magnetic tape. I have brought up a little terminal window here for you to see the transmitted data. And yeah, as you can see, it's just reading back our little ABC. And it seems to be quite reliable. Let's see when it uh, reaches the end of our transmission. Okay, so far no errors. And this is it. Oh. That seems to be a test I've done prior to this recording. So, as always, I hope I got you interested in experimenting with magnetic uh, data storage. 
In a follow-up video, I'm planning to take a quick look at the actual signal path inside the dataset and the physics involved in recording onto a magnetic tape. So if you are interested in that too, leave me a like or a comment. And thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.